Welcome to Rider Z. Well, let's meet the three takes on motorcycle gear. Our dentist is decked in $3,000 worth of factory kit. If you can't ride like Rossi, you can still slide like him. Our youth is modeling a bicycle helmet, gardening gloves, and 2x4 strapped to his shins. Because you might sell enough lemonade to buy a bike, mow enough lawns to cover a test fee, and share enough TikTok dick pics to enroll in a course, but the donation money dries up by the time you remember gear. And the third little pig clearly watched an Anthony video. Hey, this is Anthony from You can watch Decide and Ride. Or a wannabe Anthony video. Howdy, this is Lemmy with Revzilla TV. Version here with Revzilla. Hello, my name is Ryan. Hi guys, Amy here from Motorcycle Superstore. Hey, I'm Ryan Vance, sport by Track Hey, I'm Brandon with Cycle Meal. I'm from the Animal Oscar. I'm from the Cycle. I'm Jason Rockman, Either way, he found full safety at halved prices. Unnecessary. Unintelligent. Duck. Goose. And what makes smart starter gear and how much of it do we really need? I once planned a romantic movie marathon for my wife, and like her, you will not be expecting me to start with Das Boot. But the CDC would, and they studied 1.2 million motorcycle crash victims and found that the likeliest injuries are to lower extremities. And cross-check that in other countries, and yes, 66% of all bone breaks happen down here. Tibula fibula most of the time. 57% of all motorcycle crashes are low speed, ground impact, according to Virginia Tech's biblical report on bikers. And with beginners, you gotta think tip overs are even more common. See, riding is hardest when slowest. Old riders eventually find their finesse or their excuses for not doing these maneuvers, but poor newbies have neither. So when you flop at a stop, light knock, Light knock. Heavy as fuck. Here I have my motorcycle boot and here I have my hiking boot. Now this is a good hiker. It cost me a pretty penny. It cost a hefty heifer its leather. Surely I can get away with this. Oh. Beginners. Buy full height boots. It's too likely that you'll drop a 500 pound motorcycle on your leg, so find something that restricts ankle motion and crushing motion for most of your tib fib. Motocross footwear like my own Fox comps are best at this and cheapest, frequently under $200. Don't like the dirty style? Poor excuse, Fox comps fit under most pants. Otherwise, Icon makes a sleeker stomper called the Joker, but we're a bit north of 200 there. The second most common motorcycle injury is... Head? No, 28%. Thorax? No, 27%. Spine? No, 14%. A relentless 47% of crashes involve some injury here. Hmm. Well, the other common characteristic of our common low-speed crash is that riders instinctively try to catch themselves. We therefore expect a Coley's radial fracture or a Smith's radial fracture, depending how your wrist lands. And indeed, studies prove the radius to be the most frequent upper body fracture, so we've got that figured correctly. Well, what do we do about it? Sliders. Without them, your hand bites and breaks. With them, you're more likely to hit and slide. Look for a hard piece that wraps around the outside. That can prevent these Smith-type fractures as well. Five is the best company at consistently offering sliders. On their $200 race gloves, on my own stunt Evos, 90 bucks, even the $60 RS4 and TFX Vented have sliders. A bonus is that five gloves are the most significantly pre-curved. See, beginners are just building the strength to pull levers all day. The stiff, straight glove will add even more resistance and tempt you 
to do this, which is bad for reasons I'll explain in a future video. Get five gloves, they make it easier to stick with good habits. Now let's move from most likelies to most deadlies. The NHTSA has our definitive study on killed motorcyclists. Turns out your chances of dying from a head injury drop around 40% if you exercise your freedom to wear one of these. Indisputably a preventer of head injury, but which head injury? The old-fashioned head injury criterion dates from 1972. You don't need to understand these squiggles, just that it's based on your noggin's translational acceleration and the time span of that impact. Hard smack, short duration, fine. Light smack, long duration, fine. But if you're hit hard enough for long enough, the Hick number starts to climb over 1,000, at which point you have over 18% odds of a skull fracture, as scientists discovered by throwing heavy things at dead people. That's the macabre reality, and that's your head injury criterion. Enter the brain injury criterion in 2013. Brick has our helmet industry shitting bricks because it's completely different. A cadaver can tell you when its skull is shattered. It can't tell you whether the rotation of its head sloshed the brain enough to cause a concussion. So some biomechanics assholes ran 67 experiments on animals, then supercomputer correlated that data into a whole spectrum of human head shapes to derive these critical angular angular velocity numbers. Whoop-de-doo! What does it all mean, Basil? Well, Snell and DOT base their tests on Old Faithful, which decade after decade has proved to be a shitty predictor of head injury. Not that our modern and elegant brick is flawless, but at least ECE and FIM standards consider both. They require translational and rotational protection. Put simply, look for this sticker on your helmet. And it will be that simple uh, soon. See, ECE's rotational testing didn't enter the criteria until version 2206, which came out, what, last month? At the moment, you can expect everything on the shelf to still be stickered 2205, and therefore not necessarily tested for rotational protection. The Biltwell Gringo is one of few safe choices in that regard. It's perfectly round, and round helmets tend to ace brick tests. It was also recently redesigned to meet ECE's standard, meaning Biltwell made it knowing the 2206 rotational requirements were coming, and likely covered those bases. Our Gringo tips the feather at 1,500 grams, not at all strenuous for the untrained neck muscles of beginners, and rarest of all, it comes in many colors, many of which are not black. Visibility is the most overlooked safety feature of a helmet. Pick something bright. Now I have an unpopular opinion of jackets and pants, so let me shirk blame by speaking in numbers. We know most deaths result from head and neck trauma, so how many motorcycle fatalities can be blamed on thorax injuries? 4%. Abdomen, lumbar, and spine all together at another 4.5%. Shoulders and arms? Zero. Hips and legs? Zero. So here's where I become a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad man for saying it probably won't kill you to ride without a motorcycle jacket and pants. Statistically, it probably won't. Of course, that doesn't mean you should ride in skivvies. I had severe road rash once and I fainted in the shower for a week. But if you're gonna make do with anything, and those Carhartt pants in your closet, that $15 leather jacket at the thrift store, they're the least risky areas to make a sacrifice. And if you hate sacrifices, then choose something with a CE-rated backpack for safety's sake. And this is the feature most often left out of motorcycle jackets, which is sickly ironic because it's the only one that has statistical relevance for saving your life. Props to Icon, the company that consistently fills their jackets with full CE-rated armor, usually D3O, which must be expensive for them to buy because it's so soft for us to wear. This is the $250 Mesh AF, with AF meaning exactly what you think it means, Icon will be Icon. Why choose a summer jacket for beginners? Because they're considered secondary items and therefore priced lower. Which is funny because you can throw a rain shell over top of a summer jacket to make it work as your daily driver, while you can't really make an all-season jacket work in the summer. You already know what I'll say about this silver reflective colorway, so let me just say, Thanks for watching.